A new study shows that biracial Asians are perceived to be more intelligent, better looking, and more trustworthy. David, we got to talk about this because I'm not biracial. I'm full Asian. You know, for the longest time, they told us that the white choice is the right choice. But now it turns out that being mixed is lit. We got to talk about it. Biracial Asians are seen as more attractive, more likely to be successful, according to a study coming out of the University of Hong Kong. We're about to break it down. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Small Lost Sauce at smalllostsauce.com. Andrew, this is not a new study. As I was doing research for this video, there is a post from 14 years ago from the huge psychology subreddit and this is like before anybody was using reddit that was talking about this very exact phenomenon 14 years ago Mm, so we're gonna talk about it now guys um i would say this first of all i want to break down the details of this study because i think obviously the title is triggering but it's a biracial study done in hong kong done amongst Europeans and Chinese and mixed people in Hong Kong. So this is in Asia, although Hong Kong is a westernized Asian place, Asian country. It's not. And that's going to come into play later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, there are actually, there's a long history of mixing because it used to be a British colony. And anytime there was a British colony, of course, there are mixed kids. We know some uh, J-Law official. She's a mixed the, uh, kid. Out in, the okay. Eurasian aristocracy yeah. of the colonial days <laughs> yeah but i i think that's why it's interesting to note that this was done in asia but i don't know i think maybe the results aren't entirely different i will say this i think most of the mixed people uh i guess they were using a mixture of asian and european and asian and black so they were doing some mixture of both right, in right, the right. study but they were also using different levels of mixedness 30 percent 50 percent 70 percent leaning in either direction and, and they performed this by ai in a computer generated right. uh study so by the we way. gotta pop up the photo right now just so we can see oh what their gosh. ai looked like andrew 100 percent caucasian male plus 100 percent asian <laughs> by the way guys you'll never see two men mate with each other in this way a uh, plus 100 percent male can create the 50-50 composite. Uh, Does he look more trustworthy and successful and more attractive? No, no. So the study said that this 50-50 composite, this Hoppa guy, this half Asian, this Asian guy, is seen as more trustworthy than both of them, than the full white and the full Asian in Asia, though. So Asians are reading it as this Eurasian looking dude is the most trustworthy. Well, isn't it in Asia, they don't really fully trust the white guy because the white guy looks like, the guy who's like coming in to conquer everybody right. or oppress everybody. Well, I think in Asia, I could see them not wanting to rank the white guy as fully the most trustworthy because usually that is the colonizer or that guy is an outsider to their group. Now, this Asian guy that they chose, perhaps Asians are looking at him like, oh, he doesn't look high class enough. But now you get the mixed guy who you're assuming is, well, if they're mixed in Asia, then one of their parents is European and that must mean they're probably upper middle class. Right. So anyway, this went viral, Andrew, in the West. However, people were also saying it applies to Mariah Carey, Kim Kardashian, and Zayn Malik. Mm, You mean more on like the, I guess, African European side of things. Or Arab, I guess, because that's what what Kim and, uh, even though there's some debate whether Armenians are Arab, to me, Kim Kardashian looks half Arab. Like to me, for sure, they don't look white. But with enough Botox, they all look kind of Asian. Right, right. Uh, A lot of people were talking about Zoe Kravitz, uh, Keanu Reeves, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many people in music. Andrew, one of the hottest R&B singers out right now from South Africa, Tyla, has a very mixed look. Mm -hmm. T-Y-L-A. Yes, yes. Um, I'll say this, man. This study super doesn't surprise me, especially from the fact that it was conducted in Asia. If we look at Asia, there is a history of Eurasians typically in the top, like I'd say 3% of society. Right. Like 97th percentile and up of Mm -hmm. society. You saw way more mixing with the Europeans, right? Mm -hmm. And I guess it's particularly true in Southeast Asia, Indochina, as well as Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. But it could be even true maybe in a place, what, like Shanghai? Yeah, but actually they took some of these results from Beijing and Shanghai, I believe. Right. So they they did uh, poll uh, people over in like mainland China. You know, Shanghai, obviously, kind of a westernized mixed place of China. Here's my take. Here's my take before we get in the comment section. Um, uh, Yeah, I think, 
the thing about Euro features, and I think it's really interesting because the way that we as humans, we scan like a longer nose and bigger eyes, we see those and view those as European features. But there are plenty of people around the world who have those features but are not actually European at all. Like I know some Chinese people who don't have typical Chinese features, but if they took a DNA test, they're like 0% European. They're all Asian, right? right but you have a friend, Haka Will, who like looks, everybody always asked him if he was half white or a quarter white, and he took a DNA test, he was 0%. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, how far back does he have to go? Or I have a Filipino friend who, you know, like, or you got like black friends who kind of are called that they are told that they look Asian, but if they took a DNA test, it would probably come up as 0% Asian. You know what I mean? So I think like the feature set, a lot of people just associate certain features with an ethnicity while the truth is, although those features may be more prominent in that group, it doesn't mean that if you have those features, you are part that. Right, you're saying that those are just features that more on a probability basis occur more often within right, a population. Right, right, right. I or also think, to be honest, Asians are just kind of self-hating, David. That's my take, man. Yeah, Asians- get to the core of it, man. Andrew, do Asians just look up, the, do the full Asians essentially ride the jock of the half Asians? Man. Like, they're so cool, they got the more Western features, no, which no, is no, more no, elevated, I, and they look more like the people who dominated the world for the last 400 years. Yeah, I think that it is natural for humans to see the dominant group or the group that is up the ruling group or the group that is the coolest, most powerful or whatever. And then of, like of any given fishbowl, yeah, right? of any group and then want to look up to aspects of them. So I is hate- it, are you talking about like where uh non-Asian uh, like Andrew, uh, Chris Tops, Porzingis, Luca have cornrows when they're younger because they want to play in the NBA. Yeah. I, I just think like it doesn't surprise me, but I, I, I think that, also, hold on. I got one other point is that if you look at these two guys that they mix together, I don't personally think that this 100% Asian male is the equivalent of this Caucasian male, in my opinion, like this British guy. Well, they you picked I mean? like uh, I think this Asian guy's racist, too. though. He looks racist, but high class, yeah. Yeah, but this guy looks like a super British, like, uh, you know, like upper class guy. But like then the Asian guy, I feel like they picked like a kind of a chubby guy. Right. Even more chubbier than they needed a pig. So I feel like they're not actually equal in, in the level. But anyways, that's just me saying that. So yeah. Yeah, that's a funny point. Yeah, it's funny to mate uh, two guys together. That is funny. Anyway, let us just get into the comment section. Somebody said, listen guys, everybody's saying that mixed people look better. It's just because the examples they pick are the successful famous ones. It doesn't, re- everybody has ugly people. Everybody has pretty people. Yes, guys, I think one of the, Biggest, you know, tragedies is like, you know, we put so much pressure on hoppers to be beautiful. What about the non-beautiful hoppers? They exist. Think of how much pressure so you're they're under. you feel bad for the hoppers that didn't come out with the best of both worlds, but rather the worst of both Guys, worlds. I know some medical. hoppers that are not good looking oh, man. and they're told all the time, oh, you're half Asian. You know what? A lot of people don't even know that they're half Asian because nobody's interested. You guys don't even ask. So anyways... Yeah. Hey, here's something that actually goes against what you just, th- uh, this previous statement, not just what you said. It said, uh, this and researcher Xiao Tian Wang said, overall, our results suggest that biracial facial features signal a successful genetic admixture in coalition and parental generations, and thus increase the trustworthiness and cooperative potential of a biracial person. Basically saying that it's not just that every group has good looking or bad looking people. It's that the fact that you're mixed makes it just look like your parents are really open-minded, so you might be a trustworthy kid. Interesting. I also think that maybe, you know, in a funny way, the world hasn't been mixing as long as we think. We think this world is wide open, David, and globalization, and everybody's been mixing. But actually, if you think about it, the fact that we're still looking at mixed kids in a certain way is like just goes to show you how early the world is on this whole mix thing. Yes, yes, yes. I think outside of certain elite colonial circles, which I think have been mixed for hundreds of years, more to your average layman person that's like, let's just say from a village or the equivalent of a rural place of their relative country, maybe mixing is only uh, 50 to 70 years old at the most. Yeah, and I just think it makes people look different. And anytime they're different and maybe the features can be softened, certain features can be softened, or certain features can be accentuated. It's not just that they're better looking, or maybe that's not even the main point, is that I just think it looks different. 
Yeah. Well, a lot of people are pointing out Brazil as a place that's been mixed over hundreds of years. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, Brazil is extremely mixed. I mean, uh, like Beyonce, like, like, you know, like Creole people. That's like been a while. Obviously. Yeah, everybody looks like LaMelo Ball or. Yeah. Beyonce. Obviously, you talk about Kazakh people. Like, so what? Are all Kazakh people very trustworthy? Because that's. Or Uzbekistan people, like, because they kind of look like a mixed Asian. Right. Because, but they're mixed probably from like. The Mongol horde days from like 500 yeah. years ago. Yeah, but they're not necessarily like mixed 50-50. They're just like a group that's just in between for centuries. Yeah, both yeah. their parents look mixed probably yeah. in, in Uzbekistan or Kazakhstan. Um, somebody said, uh, as a biracial person that is a non-composite AI person, I can just tell you the reason why people think we have better lives is because both sides are interested in us and always asking us about our background. So we get more, uh, I guess, like pings in. Like okay, that's part of it. I can see that. I can see that as being part of it. Right. And they also said that people also feel like we are exotic, but still one of them. So there's like, we put people at ease. And somebody else said, yeah, by the way, you also get to hear a lot of racist stuff from a lot of different people when they think that they relate to you. Because oh, yeah. They, this guy said that he's half white and half Asian. And people think he's Filipino, Indian, indigenous, Canadian, other groups, Mexican. And he said that every time a group identifies with him, they will feel comfortable saying something racist about another group. But he might also be a part of that group that they don't think he's a part of. Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. No, I could see. Definitely. You're like racially ambiguous, man. This is the whole point of being racially ambiguous. Like people don't know what you are. Right. Like uh, Vin Diesel or yeah. something. The Rock. Zendaya. Somebody says, uh, you know, maybe it's just that you have more diverse genetics. So that just makes you more attractive in general. Like just people from like really, you know, far off places mixing. Yeah, I know. I mean, there's uh, there are some signs be between like bloodlines that are mixed, like dogs who are mutts. They're very healthy dogs. Like they have very little health problems. I'm not saying Hoppa's I'm not saying half Asians don't have health problems. <laughs> I'm just saying that like, I'm just No, saying, you're talking about for dogs. That's true. Yeah, then the I'm not sometimes saying pure breeds dogs. have more issues than mixed breeds. Yeah, mutts are healthy dogs. Mixed breed dogs are generally healthier than the pure bred. I don't know. That, that Take is, it for what it is. I'm just saying. Um, ultimately, man, it just is what it is. As far as like this uh, study from uh, the University of Hong Kong, I would believe that their findings are correct for sure from people from Asia, but they surveyed a lot of Caucasians in Asia too. Yeah, the mixed person looks like they had some pretty chill parents. Parents weren't gangster, weren't triads. Parents weren't meanie oppressors. They were the middle. Yeah, you know, man, I got to say, you know, I feel like, I don't know about you, David, but for a lot of my life, maybe I did like the hopper look on women. You know, like Kristen Kruick, you know, you had oh, some of the mixed ones. Right. But, but I got to say now that there are so many good looking people out there of all races, like Asian girls, like full Asian featured girls that look really good. It's like, you know, I, and then like there's beautiful. Now you're starting to see beautiful from everybody, from every country. You see the top most beautiful people of those countries. So you got to get to see finally like the best, most beautiful like features of that singular group where previously before you didn't you didn't you didn't even know anybody attractive from that group yeah no that's a good point man i would say this uh like i'm kind of off the whole i mean shout out to the hoppers and the mixed kids i mean i'm like they're fine the they're hoffers, cool we got some hoffers, friends yeah. i'm just not like oh like oh that's so cool you know i used to think that the girls were really pretty right, you know, right, I, right. I, that's, I, that's I just, just don't want to spot people extra points like you know what i mean like if you're a hopper and you can speak your Asian side language, that's great, but I just don't value it that much over just a really Americanized full Asian being able to speak their parents' language too. Um, I'll just say this, man. I got a lot of hoppas in our family, Andrew. Yep. And it seems like their lives are pretty tight. <laughs> it just seems like they got a balance. I don't know. That's just for me judging it from the outside. You guys let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Is it true? Is it not? Does it vary? Uh, this study was from Asia. It was more addressing Asian and white. But uh, yeah, obviously there's a lot of dynamics about it that we don't even, you know, we got into it in a thousand other videos. We're just trying to explore this intellectually. Uh, intellectually. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time with the Hot Pot Boys, we out. Peace. Peace.